I have to tell you that when someone asks me what I have been up to, I don't know where to begin. It feels nearly impossible for me to define two and a half years gone by so cordially. So when I have coming down from the night before and an insufficient amount of sleep, saw you. For the first time in two years I had to laugh. And one of the first things you asked me was, so you still smoke? Well, you see, it's funny because I did yesterday, so you do. Well, no, I swear that was the first time since I was Yet, since my confession, I cannot escape your playful punching of my arm, accompanied by your familiar joshing face. Nor can I not dodge your remarks like, well, it's a stoner, always a stoner, for the rest of the afternoon. From the start of the day, here I am continuously noticing your transformed figure in the absence of the big Rachel I used to know. Not that it was just your body either, because I swear, today it felt like your weight loss was taking your biggest smile and your bigger voice along with it. And I think back to sophomore year when Javier was still talking to you, telling me you've been struggling with bulimia. And I would think back to eighth grade, so painfully confused because there wasn't a time you weren't beautiful to me. Everything about you was beautiful, like the way you gave hugs. I remember cruising the halls with you in the mornings while it took so damn long because there wasn't a kid in that school we would pass who didn't want a hug from you. Because during hugs, you feel like the nectar of life, and I have spent all of high school trying to learn how to give hugs like you, not just forearms together, but one embrace of shared joy and sadness, like some sweet fluid had pulsed through us both. I have always wanted a hug like you. Because your understanding and closure was what kept me from dying, and yet sanctuary from danger is not what I felt today. Only two arms meet with insecurity and a heart grown soft. I still caught your crafty smile as I told you I can slam poetry now, and you asked me if that made me a beatnik now or something. <laughs> as you snapped a single hand before me, but your full laughter was missing. With every, every single bad joke that I told, it could not be found. I remember I could always make you laugh. No matter what happened, I would say something absurd enough to rapture your emotionless bubble and crack your stone face open. With that beaming grin I knew so well, and I could get you to talk again when the pain caused you to come to school with that word, head down in silence. I always broke your careful guard. My outrageous humor always made you happy again, so if even I can't make you laugh anymore, sweetheart, you've been smoking way too long. See, it's funny how you used to take care of me when I was reckless or hiding under tables during classes or laughing, laughing like I had to keep laughing or I would stop breathing. Yes, you kept me from drowning with loving arms that always promised to be there and with a smile that always promised to melt us both into warm oil that could only float on water. And I remember all the times when the burden on you was too great, the grief cutting in like the blade that crisscrossed your forearms, too sharp to talk about, you would talk to me. And sometimes we didn't have to talk because with one meeting of our eyes and exchange of past and present, we both already knew everything that could be said in words. And while I could read others like a novel, I digested your emotions like they'd been spoon-fed from a comic book into the bottom of my belly. So I told you goodbye today, and you told me, you be safe now, take care of yourself. As if I was still the one who needed taken care of, as if you were the one carrying me, as if I was still the one drowning. And I laughed because it hurt, and it hurt because... Because I've been taking care of myself for some time now, and, and now I'm certain you are the one in need of a warm embrace. The finely crafted gift which you passed on to me, if only you saw that, if only you would let me take you in my arms like you had so often done for me and let me cherish you, your precious smile, your laughter that melted mountains, the soft beating of your wounded heart. The time has come when I must return the favor, and I only hope as I hear your patter of faint laughter falling like paper that I did not wait too long to catch you.